Hey, you wanna see something cool? What we are looking at here is something new, something cool, something that Deer has been working on for a little bit and are finally releasing limited production this year to go full swing next year. What are we talking about today? S7 series combines. This unit is a 700 series, so this is gonna be a class seven combine of the new generation of combine that they're coming out with. And we are fortunate enough to actually have two of these units this year. So we've got an S7, and an S9 that's coming through Tractor Central. And they're not only gonna be at Tractor Central, it sounds like they're gonna be a little bit everywhere. So let's take a look at some of the details that are different some things that are the same from the previous model combine and some things that we're gonna be excited about. First thing that we're gonna check out, very top here. I see something that's very different there is gonna be that folding auger. So these particular models, they do have the capability for coming with a controllable spout on the auger now. The folding auger, we've had that around for some time, but being able to control the spout, we haven't been able to do that in the past without having a, a third party kit or a aftermarket puck kit on our old generation, but now we've got that. Otherwise, if we're looking, I mean, styling, a little bit different than our previous S series combines, but if we take a peek underneath, it's going to look very familiar very similar delivery systems in here a couple of alterations to things inside the unit um, like with the cleaning fan um, but for the most part if we look inside under the tailboard couple things that have changed but a lot of things have changed as far in the redesign as far as tech goes if you have been following deer at all lately you probably recognize that they are really hanging their hat on technology and the combine is no different let's go into the new cab let's take a look at some of the changes that they made to that technology right off the bat first thing that you're going to notice g5 displays so a G5 display is coming as a standard on the armrest. You can get the extended monitor. See you, Jared, as well. And then you're also gonna notice that we've got a different corner post display as well. Couple of minor changes in here. This is more like the X9 combine. So different styling of, as we go over here. We've gotten rid of that little cubby that's over here, gotten a deep one there. Um, Still have cup holders, got the shelf, very similar to the X9 and the Haggy cabs, but then our handy dandy refrigerator, where we're gonna keep that yummy lunch, still in the same spot. Let's start looking into the display itself. This is where a lot of things are really gonna start changing on this model compared to the predecessor. So if we take a look at the bottom here, we've got a couple of different options. We've got a couple auto features on here, right out of the gate similar to what we used to have, but not at all the same. So John Deere has had automation on their combines in the past. The automation was there to attempt to maintain ground speed, keep the machine full and efficient. And they're telling us that the changes that they made on this tech is really gonna help take this tech to the next level. So if we click into any of these, we've got our automation page that pops up on the left. We've got our three key main automation points that we've always had, ground speed, harvest settings, and terrain. But how these actually measure what they need to look at is totally different than what they used to be. First off, we've got a whole bunch of different parameters here that you see that we have to meet in order for the ground speed automation to actually work. Not only does this machine look for how much of a load that it has on it, it's also taking a look at a couple other features as well. Satellite views and forward cameras. So we've got satellite views, 
taken from the crop at a previous time. So we're looking at overviews of the crop itself to tell how thick material is from those satellite images so that not only are we paying attention to the load that we're putting on the machine, that satellite view allows us to pay attention to what's coming up. So if you're going through a thinner crop and you're coming up on a heavier bushel or a better bushel crop, the machine should take that into consideration and adjust accordingly. With that being said too, you've also got forward cameras. We've never had forward cameras on these machines before. So if you take a look up under the mirrors, there's a the camera and there's a the camera. Notice those cameras are looking down in front of the header. They're not looking straight down, but they're looking ahead of the machine so that we can proactively see what's happening in front of us. If we click in on that and take a look at our forward cameras, that is the view that you're gonna get live off this camera to tell you what's actually happening in front of us. So it's taking both of those images and creating a kind of a panoramic view of what that header is about to go through so that we can proactively keep this machine full and as efficient as possible. We do have some different things that are gonna light up as we're driving through to kind of show us how, that the camera is working. Cause these aren't just regular video cameras that you would buy from Radio Shack and put on here. These are stereo cameras that are have a software put to them so that they can actually see that height difference in the crop combine that with the satellite imagery to try and figure out the most efficient way to run this thing. Now you can have the system on and off um, if you so choose, but if we want to fully automate this rig, we're going to go all the way. The other cameras we're going to pay attention to are going to be our grain cameras. So we have two grain cameras in this system that are looking at crop as it passes through the machine. You can view both those cameras here and as grain is passing through it, you can actually see on this page, you'll see a live picture that is updating like once a second, and you're gonna see the crop conditions that you're actually harvesting, putting into the tank. And then if you do have some sort of issue, if we are breaking, let's take corn for example, if we're breaking those corn, uh, if we're seeing some dirty foreign material that's in there, um, it's actually gonna pick those points out. So if we had a broken kernel for say, you're gonna see an orange little piece light up right there and indicate where that's happening to give you a percentage of how clean that crop is. And you can change what those limits are to make this thing super picky or a little bit less picky depending on what you so choose. The other things that we can pay attention to, we've got those settings we were talking about earlier. Uh, what kind of crop preferences are we looking for? This machine is only gonna be as smart as we tell it to be. So we have to tell it what we're gonna be okay with allowing on the scale. And then when we turn it on, it's gonna learn what those parameters are and try and achieve the limits that you're searching for. Last piece that we really take advantage of around here, terrain settings automation. So when you're going up a hill or down a hill, this combine is gonna adjust for that. It's gonna change parameters within the combine to try and keep grain in as you're going up the hill. And as you're coming down the hill, it's gonna speed those things up. The whole name of the game of this is to keep the machine full. So if you're going on an incline, your gravity is going to take over, right? It's going to try and kick some of that crop out. So we're going to slow things down to let gravity do some of the work. But then as we're going down the hill, we got to speed the fan up and the other parameters up to try and beat gravity and kick some of that stuff up. Pretty smart little system when you take that into consideration. So this combine, not only is it going to set itself, keep itself full and be as efficient as possible, it's also going to take more automation pieces in there if we so choose to turn it on. If we meet certain parameters and get certain things set up correctly in here, we can turn on, turn automation. So this combine at the end of the field will can steer itself and turn around and line back up with the rows by itself. So if, as long as we have the headlands marked out and we meet a couple of different things that this machine has to see, it can turn around by itself. Then on top of all that, we can even do machine sync and we can control the grain cart tractor. So when we have a tractor that's pulled up next to us, we can actually move it forward, move it back. We can scoot it to the left if it's crowding us or we can get it in closer if it's not too far away. So this combine is one of the most highly sophisticated combines that we have currently, not only in John Deere's plethora of equipment, but across all harvesting machines. It can keep itself full and efficient. 
it can control what it's feeding, and it can steer itself, turn around, and automatically set itself up on the next pass. This is super exciting. This is the closest that we've been to a fully automated combine really in the history of combines. The only trick with this thing, excuse the sweat, it's a little hot out today. The only trick with this machine is that we can't not have someone in the seat. So we look at like tillage practices, deer has an option available for tillage already. We don't have that option available yet in the combines. We still have to have someone sitting in the seat all the time, but as some of these technologies we've pointed out, we're getting really, really close to a fully autonomous combining system. To me, that's really exciting. We've been working towards this in, as a group in agriculture for lots of years. When I was in college, I remember when the case released an autonomous tractor, and we've been in this race for autonomy ever since. We were getting there with the tractors. Now we're starting to bring in the combines. So we're excited to see this thing hit the field. We haven't really gotten to see it in the field yet and experience what this machine can do but there are going to be opportunities to see it in field hopefully and truly be able to put this technology to the test and be able to showcase it a little bit for you guys as well so there's only i think the number is like 20 of these s7 series combines out right now because it's a limited production build so it's not a full swing build uh, this is the first let's say trial years of it and it's going to go into full production of next year, so you'll be able to order rigs for 2025. But this is the picture. This is the package you're getting. There's still some fine-tuning that are left to be in these things, and that's why we call them limited production units or LPB units. Um, just because it's it's a 99% done machine, we got 1% that's left to figure out. Um, and by we, I mean John Deere. We're just the ones that get to showcase it, and if we run into any of those problems, we're going to pass them along to Deere so that they can fix them. New styling, new tech, new machine. If there's anything specific that we do want to check out on this, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in on this quick tidbit on the S7 series. We'll hope to see you on the next one.